If you're buying a home in Italy, you need advice. You need good advice. Don't go into it blind. In this video, part three of my home buyer's guide, I want to talk about locations, restorations, lawyers, one euro houses and deposit payments. This information can save you money and future heartache, so don't go away. And please stay right to the end because I have a free gift for you that you don't want to miss. Welcome to Langer Property, I am Richard Edwards. In my previous videos, we looked at the buying process, how to work with the agent, how to get the best deal and much more. That's all in parts one and two. If you haven't seen them, please take a look. Let's now talk about choosing the right location. Areas vary greatly, of course, even within the same provincia or regione. Ask yourself some questions. Do I want to be isolated? How far is the nearest town and what does it have? How far are the airports? If I'm driving from another part of Europe, how far do I have to travel? Let's talk about isolated areas. Now you might want that. I have a friend that lives up in the mountains and he rarely sees anyone and he loves it that way. But that's not most people's idea. Some of the towns we come across here in Piemonte are sort of in the middle of nowhere. And that will be the same in any region. You've got an hour's drive to get anywhere. And it isn't on fast roads, it's on windy hilly roads that you can soon get tired of. It's a big consideration. So think about that carefully. Explore the area well before you put a deposit down. You can probably do that in a day. We live in a small village of about 20 houses and for some it might seem isolated but we have a town 10 minutes away that has weekly food markets, shops, schools, everything that we could want on a daily basis. And this is really important for us. We wouldn't want to be more than 10 minutes from a decent town. We then have 30 minutes to Alba and Asti and 45 minutes to the big city of Turin. And for us this is a perfect compromise but decide what's important for you. If you're coming from another part of Europe, that can make location crucial. The south of Italy is amazing, but you can't easily drive to North Europe from there. It's why a lot of people are choosing North Italy, places such as Piemonte. Now, I'm shamelessly promoting Piemonte here, but for us, that was a big consideration. I'm from the UK, so I can drive there in one day if I need to. My wife is from Poland, and she can get to her family in 15 hours with two drivers, and she does that in one day. We couldn't do that if we had a house in Tuscany or Puglia. It's all obvious stuff, but be prepared to know you won't find perfection. Find what you like and what you can live with. And when it comes to YouTube, be sure that the information you hear about a house is accurate. It's nice houses are explained, but they need to be explained by somebody who's visited the house and seen it for themselves. I'm working with good agents in the area and will be checking their houses and will be setting up visits so I can present the very best to you. Please subscribe so you don't miss anything. I will not feature a house unless I've seen it myself and that I know the area inside out. Should you buy a house that needs restoration? On the subject of restoration, I would say the obvious again. Think about it very carefully. Pay to get the house researched, checked, so you know what you're letting yourself in for. The cost of building has gone up and it's not easy to find houses that are worth restoring as many houses have been restored in the last 25 years or so. A report from an architect or a surveyor will cost you anything from 500 to 1000 euros but it's worth it before you commit yourself fully. Minor restorations, cosmetic changes and repairs, fine, but major works can be expensive and slow. Don't necessarily believe the builder when he says six weeks and it will all be done. Get it in writing, signed in his blood if possible and keep his liver as a deposit. If you want to do the majority of the work yourself, I'm not going to argue with you. If you do want to restore something in Piemonte, then by all means get in touch as I have excellent people I've worked with for years that I can recommend, such as builders, architects, landscape gardeners, interior designers, anything you need. What about one euro houses? You have to ask yourself, why is a community asking only one euro, the price of a cup of coffee, for a house? Well, simply put, it's because nobody else wants it. How has this situation come about? Well, Italy has a serious decline in birth rates, especially since 2008. Its population is aging and shrinking at the fastest rate in the West. It seems to be because of economic situations, but and I think this is true, but I think that it's also because of... Uh, young people want a freedom that their parents and their grandparents didn't have. It means there's a growing elderly population and fewer children to inherit homes. 
In my experience, as I mentioned in previous video, I said that because of mentality, people can't always let go of their houses for what they're really worth, sometimes even if they're close to worthless. And when houses get taken over by the state, they need to get rid of them. And they also want to see towns rebuilt and vibrant. It's a noble cause, but be very cautious. Where is it going to lead you? You have to invest, you have to restore. And what if you come to dislike the place? There has to be a reason everyone left in the first place. It doesn't mean that there are chemical factories nearby and violence in the streets, far from it, but you might find yourself in an isolated place surrounded by a very elderly population. Check the area very carefully, stay a while if you can. Don't have a romantic idea about it. It can be great material for a YouTube video, but that might be all. Think as well that if you invest a lot of time and money into a place where they can't give houses away, if one day you decide to sell, you might have problems getting your money back. You might even have problems selling it. It might be better to find something that's already been restored or something that needs not such major work but is in a good place, in a desirable place. That could be a better compromise for you. Do you need a lawyer? The answer is simple, no. You have the notary and the agent. If you ask a lawyer, they're probably not going to admit that you don't need a lawyer, so might just take their time and generally complicate it to justify a fee. That's the experience I've had on several occasions. A good lawyer will tell you that you don't need him or her. If you want a lawyer, sure you can, but the notary is between a lawyer and a judge. It's a higher position, responsible position, so they will ensure everything is done correctly and according to the law, it has to be done through a notary. Maybe if you're buying a business, it might be necessary, but then usually a good accountant is better for this. Lawyers are mostly for litigation in Italy, so unless you've got yourself into trouble, you don't really need a lawyer. How about finances? Can you get a mortgage? There's no use buying with a mortgage unless you know you can get a mortgage or what percentage is realistic for you. Apparently in 2024, interest rates will be going down. We'll, we'll wait to see, but that will be great news. It will save you and everyone a lot of time if you have finances in place before you come. It is usually possible to get Italian loans and I have an expert that can help you do that. I've worked with him for many years and he's had great success helping my clients. So if you need that service, by all means get in touch. Now I wanted to add some clarification about paying a deposit. Once you find a house, negotiate and agree to buy, you pay a deposit of 10% to the owner or it's put into escrow. This is paid on the official contract called the Compromesso. I explained this in part one of this series. But now agents can sometimes ask for a deposit before this. The contract is called the Proposta d'Acquisto, or Purchase Proposal. Now don't pay this, only under two conditions. One, that you've already had the house checked for issues and that you definitely want to buy. Or two, that you can afford to lose the money. It's something unreasonable. The chances are the agent will want this deposit before you can do anything other than view the house. The agent will say it so that no one else will buy it. And this might be true. It will be taken off the market, but you're usually expected to pay this so you don't change your mind. And if you do find issues or you decide to pull out, you lose your money. And sometimes the agent can even demand his commission payment. Don't pay these deposits unless you're sure and ready and work out the agent first as well. Make sure that you can trust them. Thank you so much for watching this video and the others in this series. I hope it's been useful. Now I mentioned a free gift at the beginning. Go to my website. There's a link in the description below and you can download my free Italy home buyer's guide in PDF or EPUB format. And it contains all the information in these videos plus more. It means you can refer to it whenever you want and it should be helpful all along the process. And please let me know in the comments below what you think of it. Thanks again for watching. See you in the next video. I'm going to buy myself a coffee. See you very soon.